Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 61. In this episode, we're talking about laser spark plugs, why we love ATA, and upgrading your CPU. Thank you for listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 61. Um, we even have a random this week, which is today's Google Doodle. Uh, and it all has to do, apparently, it's Pierre de Fumat's birthday today. If you don't know who it is, go check him up. Um, but in short, who is it? For me, I don't know. He's a mathematician. Uh, he did a lot of our, I think, basically with calculus, our discrete mathematics. Yeah. Uh, and he's got quite a fame for Matt's last theorem, I know, which is one of the grand prizes that people no, the, what the million to solve. So, yeah, so millennium so problems or whatever, right? So is today his birthday or his death? Birthday. Birthday. Okay. Happy birthday. Yeah. Four sixteen oh one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. In in your in your, I see that poor guy was born in sixteen oh one. So I'm sure he's not around anymore. But no. happy birthday. Well, you could say poor guy, but if he wasn't born in sixteen oh one, his contributions to mathematics would have been negligible by now. So he was born in exactly the right time. Good point. Very good point. But in any case, yeah. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> anyway, apparently it's number theory, not calculus. Uh, <laughs> according to I Cecilia. Love the, this I love is why, why, why we need geeks. I love and, the and, chat and The only reason I mentioned calculus is because I'm pretty sure Wikipedia said that. It's so fine. We'll that's, why we have the chat, that's why we have the RC channel. People talk to us. Yeah. Anyway, uh, with us tonight we have Johan Els. Hello, uh, Tim. How are you tonight? Very well yourself. Oh, all right, thank you. Good, good. And you can find him at Johan uh, Oh, I've got no. What is your Twitter? My handle? Twitter handle is Johan underscore else. Cool. One n. My parents are all very poor. <laughs> <laughs> they could only afford one n. And yeah. they can find you at. Are you try well, and look at my blog. I, I really need to do an update there today. So uh, at some time. So I'll hope, hopefully have something after the weekend. Um, but the blog is blog dot who dash else dot zero zero or who hyphen else or who minus else. Whoever you want to say it, one of those will get you to the right place. Cool. And we have uh, Jan from Milan. Who is Jan V Z A? Oh, well done. Well done. You've been seeing that in the mirror and it'll never leave I you know. now. <laughs> I've got it wrong so often. And you can find him on my broadband. Yep. Staff writer. <laughs> yeah, my broadband on zero zero forward slash author forward slash staff writer. You must or really get a short you must get a short URL for, for that. Yeah. Bitly forward slash staff writer. <laughs> Bitly forward slash no, no, hit no. me now, please. Goo dot GL forward slash staff writer. Mm. <laughs> Try and get that one. Try and get that one. Uh, and mixing for us, we have the mixer who shall not be named. Uh, and of course, myself, Tim Hawk. You can find me at Tim underscore Hawk on Twitter and on altinet.tv. Yeah. That's where you hang out. <laughs> Fair amount of time. <laughs> Quite and, a lot. And you spend a, a, a lot of time in the IRC channel, I, I am to, I'm led to believe. Right? During no? the shows, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, um, I'm no, during the shows, we all, we all try and attend the IRC channel when the other guys are on to help motivate and... And, uh, and see where they spill stuff onto the tables and that sort of stuff, yeah. This week feels a bit, of, a bit of an odd week because tonight's the first time I've been on. Normally I've been involved, like this would be my third show for the week. <coughs> but this week it's the first show. Welcome mm, on this cool. side of the world. But let's go on. All right. Uh, events that are happening. Uh, Quite a few, we, it looks like. Uh, if you want to check for any new events, check stardates.co.za. Or if you have any events that aren't there, send us, we'll add them. Um, there's a whole bunch of movies happening. So well, yeah, you, you got to geek out this month on movies. Yes. Come on. I mean, Cowboys versus Aliens. That's a must When does that come out? Huh? It starts on Friday, according yeah. to Stack Unicor site. It starts cool. in this week, so starting I'm Friday. I'm I mean, like a bear. I, I went through, and I actually read quickly on me, uh, IMDb. Um, number one, the director also did Iron Man 1 and 2. Sorry, director John, help me. Favreau. 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 Favreau, or whatever. <laughs> he also did Iron Man 1 and 2. He did the Star Wars, Clone Wars, and Daredevil. I mean... Okay, so Star Wars Clone Wars, that's like minus points. And Daredevil was possible. No, the Star Wars Clone Wars, the TV series, not the movie. Oh, oh apparently, which apparently quite good. And exactly. I liked Iron Man. Exactly. Iron so, Man I liked. Plus, plus. But then I wanted to highlight Harrison Ford. Come on. <laughs> Han Solo. You cannot geek more out than him. Come on. Yeah, and Daniel Craig. Cowboys. So we've got James Bond and, and Han, Han Solo. Solo. <laughs> Cowboys versus Seriously? Aliens. James, yes. yes. Oh, no, I saw the James Bond guy in, but I didn't know Harrison, Harrison Ford, Ford is the other one. He's a, the sheriff or something. So Daniel Craig, yeah, he's supposed to be the lead, but then Harrison Ford is there. I mean, cool. 
What I, I just I'm gonna Blade go watch it to, to watch Harrison Ford get hit in the face because he does that so well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then secondly, I mean Captain America, one of the the first Avenger, the first Avengers, also started. Oh, that's already turning. Sorry, I've yeah, got to be honest. It's been out for about two weeks, but apparently it's been getting rave reviews. Well, the first Avenger. I mean, I don't know why. It's one of those things they probably wanted the technology to catch up before they did the movie. But yeah, I've got no additional qu uh, quotes on that. But the, f the uh, Captain America. And then the third one, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Sorry. Uh, I had a friend who went to go watch that last night, and he says it was actually quite good. I was okay. surprised. It is, um, the storyline is extremely good. The science around how, how we got ourselves into trouble is what they take on is how, because, I mean, if you've seen the original Planet of the Apes, you know where, where we end up. And yes. this is now actually covers how did we get there. Oh, and so it's a sequel to... It's a prequel. prequel. Oh. It's a prequel. So what, what caused the apes to actually... Get intelligent enough to take over the world. So yeah, I mean, geek out this month in movies. That's good. We had I don't know recently we've been getting a lot of the uh, fantasy and Avengers and all the rest of it. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, it's an uplifting again of the of the common, uh, world market. Mm. So the Hollywood's now investing into high budget movies again. <laughs> uplifting of the world market. So Up it's going to stop for a while. Well, <laughs> with what's happening in the rest of the world. Yeah, it, it's, it's going down. But for now, Hollywood's plunged all this money in. I mean, you know there's a new Sp Spider-Man movie on its way. I don't know if you've seen the trailer. Awesome. But it's also, it's not going awesome. it's to, it's also a reboot. It's a reboot, yeah. Let's, let's take it to where it should be. And then the first photos of the new Sp uh, Superman movie. Also a reboot. As long as it's better than the last Superman it movie. It is. It's the, the there's <laughs> one photo that was released of him climbing... Out of a fight, like, it's going to be good. Okay. Uh, right. Based on that one photo, it's good. All right. So, yeah, geek out this, this month for movies. Cool. Anyway, let's get into uh, – I just want to mention the competition we're running. You can win yourself a MSP340 launch pad. Um, we have uh, three of those to give away. Um, and if you get first prize is one of those plus the Passive Touch Booster Pack – um, and to win this thing very, very hard, come up with an interesting email address. So something at letstalknetwork.tv, whatever you want, um, is I want to win this competition at letstalknetwork.tv. Uh, just email us there and say, hi, I'm, I'm entering the competition. Uh, whichever one gives us the most interesting email address, they're the people who win. Yeah, so, so to be clear, it's not just you send us the email address or anything like that. You actually email us at that email address and we will get that email. Yes. yes. Anything at, at Let's Talk Geek ends up with, with Tim. So your email will be received and from there we'll decide which has got the best. Ooh. Just a question on that. The capacity yeah. touch booster, is that part of the stuff that Stuart just packed into his boxes? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know he had it here last week and, and where it is now, I don't know. That could quite be interesting if our prize ah, winner we'll, we'll, has, has we'll, to go and collect it in Cape Town. <laughs> no, we'll courier it. This person who wins might be in Cape Town. Oh, that's a good point. That's so a really good point. We'll just courier it down. Or in Pofadar. If you're our listener from Pofadar, welcome. welcome. <laughs> I know you only listened to this two we, years we later. We want to hear from you. <laughs> I want to see what your email address is that you want. <laughs> Pofadar at Let's Talk Network. <laughs> that's your Cool. Uh, TV, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, let's start getting into our topics mm. quickly. Mm. Um, Atrix, Jan, you were at the launch today. Yes, finally, uh, the, the Motorola Zoom tablet and Atrix smartphone has been out in the States. Jeepers. Has it been wow. like, has it been since February or April? I don't no, remember now. It, it came out about the same time the Asus Triple E did. No, no, the, was the, this was that? the Zoom's claim to fame. The Zoom and the Atrix launched together, if I'm not mistaken. They were at least announced together. But the, Zoom, the Zoom's claim to fame is that it, launched, it was the first Android tablet on Honeycomb 3.0. And um, part, of, part of that was the, the first Honeycomb builds didn't support SD cards. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. according to Motorola. Um, I, I haven't actually <laughs> dug in the code, so yeah. I can't confirm this, but uh, I expect that they'll know what they're talking about. And so they put an SD card slot on the Zoom, for instance, but it didn't work. So when they rolled out 3.1, then the SD card slot would work. And so people have been waiting months. And since then, things like the Triple E Transformer have launched. The Samsung uh, 10.1, of which y Johan has one, and he's currently using it to... Uh, Using it to, to do his thing at <laughs> to look up the Motorola. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. 
Okay, so I just wanted to ask. So this this Atrix is actually a phone. The Atrix is a smartphone. So I'll, okay. get, I'll get to that one. It's got a fancy okay. smartphone. So so that's the Zoom in a nutshell. Um, the updates finally rolled out a couple of weeks ago. Apparently, I'm just going to head into the IRC to make sure Hawkeys is probably. Oh no, he's just begging me if he could review the Zoom. <laughs> Do you want the Zoom or the Atrix, Hawkeys? Um, okay, so moving on to the Atrix. Now this is a smartphone. It's slightly smaller than the Galaxy S2 and the um, HTC Sensation. Smaller screen, smaller form factor in general. So it's more like the. It feels more like the HTC Desire did in your hands. Okay. In fact, if I had to compare it to a phone, I'd compare it to the LG Optimus Black. Not that everybody's held one, but it's got the same sort of texture, very flat back curve corners kind of thing but its claim to fame is what they call the web top application so it comes with this laptop dock or not comes with you buy a laptop dock for anywhere between two grand and two and a half grand you plug the phone into it this dock and it becomes laptop it becomes an, like a netbook laptop um, if you've got um, virtualization software on there like Citrix or whatever you can um, uh, log into your cloud you've got Windows and you can run Windows 7 through and the, the dock can plug into a screen and keyboard. Well, I'm looking that there's dock a, yeah. is a screen and keyboard. It oh, is okay. a laptop. So, um, yeah. So all the all the connectors run along the left edge of the device. Oh, that's a better photo. Yeah. Um, oh, so that's very cool. For those of you who've got the video on, um, our mixer has kindly pulled up a photo. And can we see it? The <laughs> the um, the connectors run all along the left edge of the device. You plug that into the dock, and you've got a laptop. Now, interesting. In South Africa, okay, it's not going to ship with this cool laptop dock. What it is going to ship with is what they call the HD dock, which is something the rest of the world didn't get, to my knowledge. So the HD dock is a dock, no screen. That's in this one. Um, yes, no screen, but it has an HDMI port and yeah. stuff, um, and three USB ports. Yeah, so you can hook this thing up. Not that I mean, the, the it already has an HDMI port on it, so you can do that. But the dock is cool. So you've got a dock, so you can dock the thing. Plug HDMI into a screen, plug in keyboard, mouse, and you're good to go. Plus, it comes with a remote, and you you need to. They demonstrated the multimedia center. Um, you know, sort of like those that have used uh, Windows Media Center or mm -hmm. the, the Apple equivalent. It is slick. It is slick as hell to use this thing as a media center. My one question with this dock and stuff like that, the one thing I can see when you plug it into the laptop dock is that screen's a touch screen, if I remember correctly. The laptop is, it might not be. I didn't actually test it, to be completely honest. I assumed honest. it was. I thought it was but it, come, it has a trackpad and stuff as well. So you get a mouse cursor the whole nine yards. Um, so you'd actually have to plug a mouse into this thing to scroll. and. Yeah, uh, you, you can, but it has a trackpad. I'm so talking now with the HD dock. Oh, with the HD dock. Yeah. Well, you've got um, three USB ports. So you can do anything. Yeah, you'll have to plug in a normal. Yep, go buy a mouse for 20 bucks. Because I must say, there's one thing I really liked about the Asus, Asus yeah. one is that, that the whole thing is now a touchscreen. So, yes, you've got the touchpad in it, but I, I now want to touch screens. I, you know, I want to click there. So now I'm using it with my normal screen. Now I'm back to a mouse again. And, mm. and the mouse is quite nice for certain things, but for other things, you want to swipe backwards and forwards. You actually want to use the screen, especially on Android, uh, because Android still doesn't translate well to a mouse and keyboard type no. environment, really. And it shouldn't. It's Android. Um, so it should be coming with a touchscreen yeah. like the Asus Transformer. So that, I mean, obviously, the, the Asus Transformer, I mean, it's a touchscreen that plugs into a, a laptop dock. Um, but now, I mean, isn't this going to be just a very glorified, very expensive solution? Because you're now paying for an LCD plus a keyboard. Yes. Plus then the well, phone. So it's two grand for that. Now if you come two, two, two and a half grand. Now if you compare that to the Asus, um, the Asus Transformer will probably come in a little cheaper because the phone is going to cost you five and a half grand. Yeah. The the Atrix. The dock is going to cost you say two grand. Now with the Asus Transformer, so they, that, they that cost you four and a half grand, yeah. and the dock cost you another one and a half grand. Yeah. Okay. Now that that is that two grand for the HD dock. No, it's two grand for the laptop dock. Laptop the HD okay. dock is, is thrown in. Yeah. Um, so if you go and buy an Atrix at a at an official South African reseller, as in it's not a great import, then you will get it in one giant box. Oh, you get the, you get it. So it's not it's not a separate thing. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Right. So th it's in a separate box, but they put it in a giant in a bigger box. So that they give you your phone and your HD dock. Altogether, HDMI cable, which can cost, I don't know what HDMI cables go for. I know it's a ripoff. They charge 300 bucks for HDMI cables at Hi-Fi mm. Corp sometimes. Uh -huh. Micro HDMI? Yeah. Just go and, uh, there's, there's, and I'll find it before the end of the show. There's a crowd here that opened up a shop um, in, in Centurion. They're close to where, um, uh, where, where, barbecue. Boss, 
Boston, Boston Barbecue. Barbecue. Okay, yeah. All right. They've got a mini HDMI to HDMI cable. 85 bucks. Nice. I need to go buy one. That's the. I'm also. I need to get there. <laughs> I want to run one of our. And they run an there. awesome online. They run an awesome online store. Don't, so I'll don't find be it. fooled find by it. gold plating no, and the kinds of noise no cancelling junk digital. on your HDMI cables, please. Just get an 85 rand cable. Plus, the 85 ca rand cable might only last you two years, and the the gold cable might last you longer. But if you work it out, just buying a new cable every two years will work out cheaper. Well, the phone hopefully <laughs> yeah. you'll replace in two years. So. Well, the whole theory about the gold cable is, you know, in the old days, it, it was to give you a better connectivity and it would never rust. <laughs> so for your audio, you want the best connection. But if you're doing digital, it will error correct and it will fix all that. Yeah. Well, you still don't want rust on it. But I mean, seriously, if they're not using some sort of stainless, <laughs> sta like stainless well, when rust I'm, when steel. What I'm talking about is, is compared to copper. Yeah. Sure. Copper, uh, I'm when not going to the, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, I'm that's the Atrix and... Um, it looks like an awesome phone. What What's the sort of specs? Dual core? Yeah, it's dual core. Um, let me pull up the article. Sorry, we should probably pull up the article so you guys can read what the specs are. Just and, this and is a reference where, and dump it where in does the it fit IRC. into the current market? Because you say they've launched this phone is over a year old. Um, not a, over a year old. It is probably six months old now. Okay. Um, and they also explained at some length, you know, why why that happens, unfortunately. Um, but then I want to just say, it looks like if you just get the standard dock, which you say might be included or will be, it included, will be included, it does take a keyboard and yes. it's got an HDMI output. So the application is on the phone. So you could still add an external screen and keyboard and yep. still run it. Yep. But it won't be a touch screen. So that still that's won't the, be a touch yeah, screen. That's, yes. the, that's the drawback. So exactly, uh, t uh, Tegra um, Hawkeys is, is saying in the IRC, it's a Tegra 2, so that's dual core, one gigahertz. Uh, Tegra 2 is made by NVIDIA, for those who don't know. A gig of RAM, DDR2, uh, 32 gigs onboard storage. I'm looking at the zoom specs. Um, <laughs> Atrix's specs is still Tegra 2, still a gig of RAM. QHD display, according to the spec sheet. Mm. I didn't look it up, uh, or I didn't look it on the device. It didn't I look like QHD. I know the guys, Maybe were, the guys were tweeting. I had to check, and one of the others also said QHD. Yeah. So 16 gigs of onboard storage and microSD expandable um, on the on the Atrix. Um, and then, interesting, the Motorola spec sheet for the Atrix 4G is what it's marketed. Mm -hmm. I asked them about that. I'm going. Are you going to market it as 4G in South Africa? No. They said no. <laughs> Smart move. Um, but um, overseas, it doesn't have 900 megahertz WCDMA support, which means cell C is pretty much out of the equation. Yeah. And apparently for South Africa, it will have 900 megahertz it's support. It's pretty much a chip that they replace, I think. Normally. Yeah, you just put in a different... I don't know what they... Well, in, yeah, whoever. Texas Instruments, Qualcomm, whoever they use. Um, and apparently this is also going to be the first Motorola phone to launch in South Africa with Moto Blur. So some people are groaning inside, and some people are going, eh, I'll give that a go. Um, yeah, I've heard it's not the best. But anyway, yeah. we'll, we'll leave that. We'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> so should, should, we, should we go into the, the next topic? <laughs> yes. Which is uh, apparently uh, Motorola has been bought by Google. So this is quite amusing that they've got this release. <sighs> and people oh. were saying something. I didn't get time to read the articles about sell your Google shares. Here goes the boat. But in any case. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't uh, fully SN, agree with that. S&P. Somebody in Poor's, uh, one of the big yeah, standards in Poor's, standards yeah, yeah, recommending. Uh, uh, look to me, I think it's actually good. It's something they had to do, and basically for the patents. That was the main article when it came out, because they were mm. talking about they were actually buying patents, yes, which Motorola have, and that's what drive the purchase. But I mean, wh how are the rest of the manufacturers going to respond? I mean, and, uh, is and there Google, be an issue? Google have been very, very. Um, uh, vocal about this whole thing. They're, they're trying to sort of placate everybody, saying Motorola will run as a separate company. They will still be an Android licensee. It'll be a company on its okay. own. Um, so it, Google is not going to be building phones, yeah. except it will, as a subsidiary of itself. Look, and what, what they but might do is they might actually not add, they'll run straight Google. Yeah, and and um, this this will now be sort of maybe in the same way as we've got certain things in South Africa with Telcom. So, uh, for mm -hmm. instance, ATA um, buys uh, backhaul and stuff from Telcom like a normal retailer. Well, actually, I was oh, going to say that's a better example would be Samsung, who both produce a Samsung phone and then sell stuff to, to Apple. Apple. Yeah, and it's two actually separate divisions, and they. 
the, the, the guys who build the phones and the tablets actually have to bid the same as Apple does for the components. Yeah. And, I mean, from the look of, looks of things, Apple pays enough to get <laughs> exclusivity on those chips. Yeah. Because nobody else volumes, is allowed to use yeah. the A5. Um, all right. Now, interesting thing about this Moto Google thing. Um, for those who don't read Cringely's blog, read Cringely's blog. He's been in the industry for longer than most of us have been alive. South African? Or? No, no. no, he's, no he's, a, he's an overseas dude. What does he do? What, what does he blog about? He blogs about the technology industry. Yeah, computing I remember reading him. He's actually very, okay. very Cringely interesting. Cringely has been a technology gossip columnist for as long as there has been a, techn uh, a, 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 a Silicon Valley. It's before blogs were blogs. Yeah, he had a blog before there was such a thing as a blog. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Go. Running timely. When, when we were still calling a blog a column. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what changed? We added a di time date stamp. Uh, now it's called a blog. Well, yeah, and we run it on WordPress. Um, but Not all of them. Now, interesting is he, he brings a couple of things um, uh, to light. Now, the most interesting thing I want to talk about, uh, he, he mentions Google Voice, uh, which isn't really relevant to South Africa at this stage. Yeah. He mentions Motorola's Java licensing. Now, for those who don't know, Oracle currently wants to haul Google into court yes. over Java. Yeah. And Motorola is a licensee already of Java. Um, or it somehow has some sort of concession on so, Java. So they might actually be protected. So if Google buys Motorola, they'll be protected against Oracle's onslaught as well. And as we all, uh, for those who don't know, Android is a, is a Java-centric platform. Yes. Without Java, there is no Android as we know it today. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Say that again. Without Java. There's no Android. There is no Android as we have it today. Yes. Basically, yes, okay. it's, it's running Linux underneath, but then on top of it is pretty much Java. So when Sun Java or Sun Java? Well, well, Dalvik. no, that's Dalvik. what I'm asking. <laughs> no, it's a but but it's it's still the Java programming language which okay. Sun has it's a IP gray rights area, to. and we, we, none of us are lawyers, so we're not gonna. <laughs> so you can you can gamble on it. You can have the Supreme Court rule on this thing, yeah, or you can just insulate yourself. Well, you can do both. What and buy Sun? No. You insulate yourself, so you buy the company that basically gives you the right to run the Java thing, and then you go to the Supreme Court to say we can run it without this thing. And if you win that, you win it anyway, and if you lose, you covered. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, so I, overall, without actually being able to evaluate it yet, good phone, bad phone. I I, I enjoyed the the Atrix. I'll I'll do a a bit of a hands on I think for my broadband. Mm -hmm. um, I took some photos of benchmarks that I ran. Mm -hmm. It's slick. Um, I didn't get to play with the widgets because I don't want to put my account information into no, somebody absolutely. else's phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, it's got biometric unlocking. Very neat little features. Um, and it's got a 5 megapixel camera. It's not a bad camera, but the HTC Sensation and the Galaxy S2 are, are, are beating the pants off it at this stage. Um, did, so, did anybody ask Motorola about after sale support? The screen breaks, are they going to fix it? Yes, yes. Um, I mean, they these guys are... In South Africa, they have a South African business. So you're going to um, take it back to Motorola, not to... No, no. Unfortunately, even the big guys like Samsung and HTC, you go th back through the retail channel. Okay. So you go back through to wherever you bought it from. If no, that's no, I mean National that, Mobile, I mean... good luck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no shame. <laughs> but, but, but there are some atrocious service centers in South Africa. No, what I mean with the question is, is, is Motorola going to re repair their own equipment? Or are they going to still work through somebody? It depends on what's wrong. I don't think they can fix the hardware if something's okay. wrong on the hardware. In fact, I don't think anybody does. If something's no, actually nowadays, fried, they just replace the If a chip board. is fried, yeah, they might be able to just replace the whole PCB. Otherwise, okay. new phone. Hopefully Le it's in warranty. Leaf handles HTC, and they do the HTC repairs. Mm. Mm. So it's not HTC directly. So is Motorola going to represent themselves? Was that the question asked, or is it going to still be through the I just don't... Just pray even that Motorola Nokia. is not going to use um, Let Me Repair. Yeah, but even Nokia, yes. even Nokia Thank you. in that's South Africa. Where my <laughs> that's where my anyway, question yes. is yeah, from. Ask, ask Hawkeys, even Nokia in South Africa, who is the biggest cell phone seller in the country, sends their stuff back to Germany to be repaired. Ridiculous. Okay. Right. Um, anyway. anyway, I'm going to move us along. Um, something I forgot to mention. Uh, <laughs> we have been sponsored uh, a whole bunch of beers. And sponsorship! And other Our first things official from sponsorship. Castle. Second official sponsorship, actually. Second? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Castle. Um, th yeah, thank I'll, you. Yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, you will show off. I'm drinking my Castle Light tonight. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to Little Sports guys for organizing it. Thank you, guys. Cool. So we have a proudly South African uh, sponsor, which is very cool. Anyway. Um, Next one, once again, is you, Jan. Uh, you Go sent me. us a link about the internet database of periodic tables. Yes. 
And um, this is something that, that people, look, I, I knew that there wasn't just one periodic table. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there's, there's only, s <laughs> there, you can't do anything about the elements, but you can do some things about organizing the elements. And this is actually an interesting, an interesting place uh, for, the, for the science geeks out there. Take a look at the, the different kinds of periodic tables uh, that are out there, the different ways people have chosen to organize uh, the, the, the periodic table of the elements, including 3D, there's 3D tables, there's um, you know, polar yeah, tables, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Another one I looked at very quickly was the Mayan one. Yes, and because it looks like the, the Mayan, Mayan calendar. calendar. Cute. And it actually looks very cool because it actually lines up, um, I think it's drawn in the way that the electron spheres, whatever it's called. Yeah, the valence electrons, yes. isn't it? Electron shells, that's the word I was looking okay, for. Okay, cool. Um, go. And you can actually see how the different elements, you know, these ones match up with these ones here and how it all works. Uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. Go check it out. And uh, also another interesting thing um, I found when, when reading that site is that apparently there's quite a debate on about where hydrogen should be. So uh, go check it out and weigh in on where you think hydrogen should be on the periodic table of in the, the elements. the universe. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, the next topic I'm going to bring in here is the laser sparks revolution in combustion engines hmm. and this is basically uh, was an article about guys instead of using conventional sparks they're now going to be using lasers okay um and the main reason is like a whole bunch of advantages and half the thing is you know if you want to let's say l run your engine leaner which basically put more oxygen and less fuel um you need for for to spark you need a, basically a far higher current and that basically wears out your spark plugs. And the reason why you want this is basically you get a far better, get more bang for your buck. Um, so you get better burning, so you get more stuff burning, and also a lot of the bad stuff, the, the half combustions, which apparently causes a lot of problems, mm. then doesn't occur. Uh, now with common ones, basically you cause things to wear out. Um, so with the spark plugs, or the laser, it can't wear out. You just keep on firing and, and it never wears out. Also with this thing, you can now do time things. And you can do multiple lasers, so you can actually get it to combust. Uh, they're eventually looking at three different places inside your your thing when it. Goes. So so much for for your four stroke engine. Uh, no, it'll no be a it will still be four stroke, but inside your your chamber, the the one one of those strokes, when the laser fires, it actually fires to three places inside the fuel. Okay. So you basically get it to combust in three different places. So apparently, something about the wave is a lot better. So you're you're basically you get more bang for your buck and far better uh, burning. If that improves my fuel economy, I'm down with putting lasers in my car. The, the, the thing is, um, surely, I mean, the, the thing generating the laser can wear out. You're going to have to replace that. Yes. But you'd have to wear it, uh, replace it far fewer times. Um, I think they were talking about like 25 years. So, wow. So, Bob the mechanic on the corner, sh corner shop yes. is now going to be trusted to replace high power lasers inside of your motor. Well, it'll be we'll come in a, a, a spark plug format. So it'll be plug and play. Yeah, you'll literally see, you'll take out your spark plugs, put a laser. Admittedly, it, you know, they might not go into the common cars, but in those cars that they're built for, it will be that simple. It'll be just something you, you slot in. Think about it. The spark okay, plug McPhee. is actually an incredibly complicated device. Well, you actually think about what it's doing. Yes, but you yeah. don't need to know that. Okay. So you're just going to switch it in. Uh, yeah. Okay, makes sense. But there must be some other changes on the coil and... But okay, yeah, the, the design of the car might change a bit. Yeah, look, because for your timing, so, you know, with this thing, they say you, you obviously want to time your, your, the laser as it fires differently and all the rest of it. So in that, you might, you might have a different, slightly different engine design. Um, but it'll be far more, more fuel efficient. Um, so especially with all the, the fuel prices going up, it can save money. Well, hopefully. Oh, thanks. I see you, you dropped it in. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Link, li link in the... Johan, you wanted to talk about KDP. Yes, KDP. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite... <coughs> okay, <coughs> yes. <coughs> quite amazed that nobody's asked me. Um, so in episode 16 of uh, Let's Talk Afrikaans, one of our other channels that we run on Let's Talk Network, uh, we spoke to Paul Els, a writer that's written uh, five, six books now. He's releasing number six. And uh, one of the books that he wrote was in Afrikaans. And uh, he actually, because of the cost of printing he's actually made a conscious decision that he's not going to take it back into print so i said to him well you've got a written r book here so why don't we see what uh is involved with kindle okay and i can tell you guys kdp is kindle direct publishing kdp.amazon.com is something that will take you 10 minutes to register and if you've got your book ready 
it will take you another 10 minutes to publish. And then there's a 24 hours where Amazon just quickly checks if everything is in place and you've published on Kindle. I've heard from other podcasts this is incredibly easy. That technology that they've put in place there is just unbelievable. And you submit, yes, we, we did a couple of submissions. You could read, I could have probably sat and read through the whole documentation about how to do the layout and stuff. But I took the easy route and I actually took his uh, first version of uh, Word, published it in and, and see what came out. And, and then, okay, went back, made the changes and so on and so on. But there's just a, a, a very interesting way to actually publish your own books. And there's a back and forth around what the, the costing are, and they've got a 25% royalty and a 70% royalty plan, and, and, and. But I mean, if anybody out there is sitting on something that you ever wanted to see if it will publish, go for it. That it's just, it's, it's so unbelievably, they've made it so simple. 24 hours um, later, they didn't even email him to say, okay, yeah, we've accepted your publication. I just quickly did a search on Kindle uh, on the site, and up came the book, and I, I'm like, uh, Dad, your book's there. <laughs> it's there. So, and you get to set your own price. You've got a, they've, they've got guidelines where um, if it's a 20, I don't want to go into details because that is a lot of information. Okay. But 25% but royalty, so you get 25% of the sales, you, you, you set between. Which is more than most publishing houses. That's the first thing my dad said is those, those, those um, ratios is a hell of a lot better than he's ever got doing it himself. Okay, so hopefully if he gets the volumes, then it will pay off. But 25%, you can, see that you can only set the price between $1 and nine ninety nine. If you go 70% royalty, then you can go between 25, uh, between, um, I'll give you the name of the book now, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mixer, because you're not going to find it like it. Um, then you're going to, uh, between 25, uh, then you can set it up to 30, no, up to $100 for the book. So there's, a, and there's, there's, there was a, there's a, a, a handling fee charge that I didn't find in the documentation when they deliver via Vispinet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They actually charge the writer. Is it the right to the charge? Well, they added because we submitted at one price and eventually it got listed at another price. Mm -hmm. And when I actually went to buy it, to, to, to buy it for myself, I then noticed, oh, no, there's a $77 charge for, for Whisper delivery. So this whole thing about Whisper is for free, they're talking crap. <laughs> well, <it's, you, laughs> they work it in. Yes, of course they work it in. So, yeah, if anybody, um, the book's name is Unglububushi. Yeah, there we go. Kulumbushi, well done. Okay. The book is there. Yes, it is expensive because that is seven years of work that's there. And then, yeah, like I said, we weren't sure at what price to put it in. But really, if, you ever, if, you've, if you're sitting on something that you're not sure if it's going to sell, kdp.amazon.com, you log in with your standard Amazon username and password. It's just a little contract you've got to just scan through. There's nothing. They're really just saying that uh, in the contract that um, they, can, they can manage the price. And as anybody's bought your book, you can't withdraw it. Okay, so you can you can withdraw future sales, obviously, but if somebody's paid for that book, they keep it on their servers. Because they got burnt by, um, <coughs> what was it, that they retracted, that they sold 1984 or something like that, and then they pulled it back. It's not that. It's because the, the whole contract with Amazon and your Kindle is the fact that at any time you can update your book again. So if yes, you lose your yeah. Kindle, you must be able. Yeah. So <coughs> have a look at it. Um, my dad, yeah, he's very proud that it's an Afrikaans, the first history book we could find on Amazon. So let's see how it goes. Mm. Um, the rest are all storybooks. Especially considering we now have the Kindle <coughs> being sold at retail in South Africa. Exactly. At macro. I mean, so that's really sweet. they down for retail. It's well, in macro. Well, it's, it's in retail. macro. I mean, oh, in re retail, not retail, not the price you can buy. Sorry. That was no, 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 no. Considerably more expensive. Than no, no, it's somewhat more expensive, but I mean, they pay yeah, all the but I mean, stuff for you. But whatever. People of my, I don't want to, Dad, you're not old, but people of his age, that's where they bought the Kindle. He's already had one of his friends email him to say, okay, how do I get it off Amazon? I'm like, and he says, no, he's had his Kindle for six months. So how, what have you been reading for six months <laughs> if you don't know how to buy anything off Amazon? I mean, like, in any case. Especially considering that nothing is free on the Kindle. No, like, there is. No, there's a lot. There is free there's stuff. There's a lot. Huh? What? Yes, that's what I makes can't get it. I any non-copyrighted <coughs> stuff on there for free. Like, if I want to read Alexander Dumas, I have to pay for that. It's amazing how many... Uh, I have heard there's a way. I, I don't have one, so I can't tell you. No, no. In the Kindle store, there are free books. There are actually... I'll go take a new look. There are actually free books in the Kindle store. Um, I'll give you two examples right now. Let me just anyway, find the right I, icon. I'm move us on, on yes. A okay. Uh, give me a second. <laughs> you can, we can come back. I'm Go there. Amazon Kindle. It's logging in. <laughs> Google Plus um, brought out some games last year. 
Yes. Um, and we now actually have it in this country. Yes. Uh, I've tried a couple. They sort of work. Okay. Uh, I had a crash. But I am running Hold my on. next... But this is now directly against Facebook. Yes. Yes. This we is what that. launched Facebook was flipping far How did you miss all this? This has been going on for about a week now. I still don't have a Google Plus account. I'm a, a Google Apps user. Uh, oh, yes. So I'm not there. Locked out. Yeah. Uh, well, what launched Facebook, let's be fair, was... The Farmville. No, man. No. It, it was their, their focus on universities. So they had yeah. a core group of people when they, when they launched to the rest of the world already. And they had exclu exclusivity as well. Yeah. So you, if you had to be in a university to get it, so everybody wanted it, and then they slowly released from one university to another university. And especially, I mean, if the university goes, oh, this is a university service. No, no, it's a hookup service. Um, and <laughs> Run in a university. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, so you can, you can call it what you want. But so, yeah, I mean, look, games make no mistake. Social gaming, uh, I think, puts yes. Facebook in a whole different league. league. Yes. Okay. But, yeah. Mm, cool. Um, but they have Angry Birds. They have Angry Birds. And like they've got everybody some else. strategy games. Yes, like everybody Okay, else. I'm lost. How are you going to... What? Wh wh what? So you're going to play Angry Birds within Google Plus? Yes. And there's bits where you can actually challenge your friends to levels. Okay, okay, thank you. So they've added a social part yes, to... Because yes. otherwise, I mean, Angry Birds is just in a tab next to it. Because yeah, you can run Angry Birds. I, I, I know you can, but it's just everybody has Angry Birds. Facebook has Angry Birds. That, that, that's going to be... Your TV will soon have Angry Birds. Angry Birds has just become the benchmark of everything. Yes. I mean, it's been amazing. I, I, I don't company. like playing Angry Birds with a mouse. I just thought I'd put that right out there. Okay. Um, but it's amazing I'm, how my yeah. eldest daughter at six years, how much mouse skills... In, the, in our days, we used to play solitaire mm. to learn how to work the mouse. Mm. She plays Angry Birds. On the, on the PC, and that's become the new solitaire. Mm. But, but I must agree, much better. Yeah, it's much better on the touchpad, yeah. but she's um, not playing with it. But other games, other games on there, they've got poker, Zenga, uh, Zenga poker, I think. So if you hate Zenga, they've got it, like it's on Google+. Plus. A, um, I want to say some Earth, but not some Earth. Yeah, it's basically... Set settlers. Yeah, um, so they've got a sim game, they've got some strat games. Eh, interesting. Well, amazing, and it's all web-based. Did you check? One of them had Flash involved. Okay. Which, which I don't know why, was complaining about the Flash that came with Linux. So I complained. Yeah, but okay. And the rest looked like they're all HTML5. Well, Angry Birds is HTML5. Angry Birds was definitely HTML5. Um, the others I didn't check. I just okay. I clicked just to see that they installed all the rest of it. But it's worth checking out. I liked, I must say with Angry Birds, that there's like four levels where you can compete against your friends. Mm -hmm. And it's quite strangely exhilarating when you go and it says, Okay, you're number two now. You just have to play again just to get a little bit higher. I'm number one. There by goes the way. productivity. <laughs> in your circle. Yeah. <laughs> I won't ask who's in your circle. Just quickly to come back to the Kindle store. Mm -hmm. uh, a Christmas Carols for free, Alice in Wonderlands for free, Pride and Prejudice, Treasure Island. So there's there's a couple. You just gotta sort by price. All right, I'll take a look. Take a look. There's quite a bit. I would probably not read any of these titles, but they're there. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland's pretty cool. Yeah, I want annotated Alice, but that you're paying for. Yes, yes. Right. Um, apparently, uh, Intel's letting you upgrade your CPU via software. What? Oh, have they done that now? Because the, yes. they, they, they started rolling that out last year. They Is have one for three CPUs. You basically, once again, you download a Windows app. Oh, what did you expect? Huh? Come on, that's a fail. Look, it's my, called my Wintel on. for a reason. That's a fail. That's, that's a fail. Yeah, it basically, it's okay. DLC for your processor let's say for you've those got a huge gamers big out there. Server farm. They're not going to be running Windows. Now you need to update them. Okay, your server CDs have got Linux on them yeah. that you boot from, and that's your whole management environment for an Intel server is on a Linux CD that comes with your mm -hmm. server. And how do you run the updates? It would be off that CD. Yes, for the BIOS. It will be off that CD. Okay. Everything happens on when you're running Linux ser uh, Intel servers. That, and if anybody in the chat room can remind me, they call it specifically something. I do know. That CD yeah. is, is what you boot, and that CD is built on Linux. So mm -hmm. your driver disk before you start installing Windows. So server environment is different. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got headless uh, support over networks and whatever, whatever. But, I mean, on the desktop, what did you expect? No, it's just, it's a what no seriously, expect? DLC for my hardware. That's just... Like, I don't even buy DLC for my games. And that's where DLC thrives. DLC? Downloadable content. Oh, look. 
So this is. This I must say it's a bit of a foul that they obviously nowadays everybody releases stuff that's not ready. Okay. In software. But let's just come now back. Now they're doing it with hardware. Well, the hardware like, is ready. It, it apparently allows you to increase your CPU frequency, but can't 20 you do to twenty five percent? Yeah, can't you do that by overclocking anyway? I know. Guys, Thank you. So we are using Sandy Bridge three point two gigahertz Sandy Bridge processors and overclocking them to five gigahertz with just air cooling. Thank you. Um, no, so that's something that you could have done for very long, and you could have bought an Asus motherboard that actually does it very. So I don't understand what the software gives you. I'm yeah. gonna click through now. <laughs> I'm interested. Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> so well, is it now ago, maybe actually that enabled certain features? Bec because the blurb on slash dot says this time upgrades will actually increase CPU frequency. I can do that by adjusting the multiplier in my BIOS. Thank you. And there's a lot of motherboards that you buy, and it actually ships with yes. software you install to manage all those settings. And they will monitor your CPU heat and actually tell you, hey, you're running too high. Let's, let's bring it down a bit. So what is this now? Just basically Intel saying, no, no, we can do it. You know, it's fine. I think there was more <sighs> to it than that, but I must say I didn't read too much. It, it's a, they've got a massive blurb on the Intel website. I'm actually just going to paste that into the IRC. Well, somebody says maybe it's, it's overclocking for, you, for your grandmother and your mother. Which they're not going to do. Then again, they're not going to run the software anyway. Exactly. I mean, if anybody's going to do this, it's going to be some sort of server Look, admin. Let me ask your opinion. I mean, for many years, it's, it was said that Intel makes one CPU. <laughs> okay? <laughs> then they tested. That's an that's a urban region. I, I'm, just, I'm just quoting. I mean, then they tested at a certain grade and res re re um, reliability and whatever. Then they start, okay, it fails at this speed, so let's bring the speed down and let's test it again. And at the, the speed where it's reliable, that's the one they stamp on the cover and then they ship it off. Is that urban myth or is it not? So actually, the CPU you've got in your PC... Might have, because they don't teach, test every CPU separately. They do a batch test. So your one out of the batch could probably run at the speed, fully run at the speed it should. Look, I do see one of his also enables more cash. Now, that is weird. So they're doing what Where are you pulling cash well, they, out of your anyway. anyway. So IBM, IBM has had this that model. That is interesting. You know, IBM has had this model for some time. That IBMers actually joke, and they say, our warehouses are our client premises. We store our equipment on client premises, and when the when a client wants something, they want more, they want more power, they want more uh, memory, they want more whatever. We turn it on. Yeah, they just buy a license from IBM and they turn it on. And then w when you run, when you physically run out of hardware, they have to put down another box. Okay, but uh, and, and Liz, I have a th is this not Intel getting ready so in future they can do this? This is them testing that feature. Well, you. All CPUs, you buy the same CPU. Well, then all they've done with this press release is told the world, here's something else to hack. <laughs> That's all they've done. <laughs> here's something else to hack. Yeah, but the guys who know that it's hackable know it already. Okay. But I don't think, I don't know, no, there's not been a lot of effort around hacking CPUs. Of course there has. Well, that's what overclockers do. It is. I've got, I know my really motherboard can actually turn on when they've turned calls off on, on the CPUs. My motherboard will turn and them And it's on. interesting. Fried okay. Roadkill has, has said in the IRC, by the way, that it is confirmed. That is exactly what they do. And that then makes sense about why overclockers can do what they do. Because if you read overclocker um, write-ups, right? Yeah. These guys find a particular stepping. Um, or build, or, I mean, there's so many different yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. settings. Uh, yeah. The things, uh, well, um, uh, naming uh, naming conventions for the CPU. Stepping is one of them, and then there's something else. And like, if you get something from a certain batch, exactly as you say, then the guys go, if you get a CPU in this batch, you can you can overclock that bad boy to this. Because I have seen blocks where they actually give you serial number ranges mm -hmm. and say, you get a CPU in this range, this CPU range can go to this speed. Yeah. From a manufacturing that. perspective, that makes absolute sense because if you're stamping one piece of silicon, it it's is much, so much cheaper, cheaper than trying to differentiate. But yeah. now, very good question because I've got, I've got a nice display on the screen here. How far back will this upgrade go? Is this not only actually There's on only the three, three processes that this will let, will let you do this on? So yeah. it's a quiet, it's two, it seems to be quiet threes. Strangely enough, I think I have one of them in one of these pieces. So I want to test this at some point. And uh, what's that Pentium one at the bottom? G693. I've never, I've never seen that before. I'd have to go look up what that CPU is. Well, actually, you, you need to look for this G622. 
increase. Afterwards, it's no, hold on, hold on. This is overclocking. Inc benefit with the upgrade. Increase yes, processor for frequency. The, for that one, but the top one does frequency and, and cache. And cache. So that you get more. Oh, so the okay. i3. But that's anyway. interesting because the i3 exactly does that. Okay. But we need to okay. move on. Cool. Interesting. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's, a, that's a good topic. I mean, yeah. we, could spend, we could spend one night on overclock. And, yes. and this has come for a while now. This was announced. So just so everybody has the context. This was announced last year sometime. I remember doing uh, finding it and writing it up. It wasn't a press release. Somebody discovered it or something. Mm. Uh, it was available as like a retail thingy. You could buy it off the shelves at like Best Buy or Radio Shack or whatever and I, it was terrible then and it's terrible now <laughs> bottom line <laughs> all right somebody's went and calculated uh, if you you know the carbon footprint for bicycling I am watching the time if you basically had to buy a bicycle and you had to cycle to work instead of driving how long is it worth it huh. and somebody says you know it's not quite a simple calculation because we always go well obviously it's more worth it you know I'm cycling I said yes but a certain amount of carbon has to go into making that bicycle. And it actually turns out scientists. the bicycle needs to live, be, you need to use it for 15 years or something like that to offset the amount of carbon you're saving in making that bicycle. Um, plus, you know, the food you consume, because now you're cycling, so you're consuming more food. So therefore, that needs to be transported more. So there's a whole bunch, it, it goes into... The whole formula around... Yes. And then, and then, like, how much of that food is cow? Because we know cow generates a lot of methane. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes... In, uh, they say at the end of the day, it is way more carbon effective than using a car. But it's not just a simple calculation. So if you buy a bike and never use it, well, mm -hmm. you've actually now wasted... Because it's, it's, not a, it's not a... Well, you buy it while... Don't you, you know, have two bicycles in the, in the garage? Yeah? Don't understand. Well, one, of them, one of them... Carbon <laughs> feed. Mine. And I inherited it from my brother. I'm, just, ask, I'm just asking. I, I, I'm sure I noticed two bicycles. But then again, I mean, brilliant, brilliant exercise for this guy to go through. I hope it was a thesis. So he got some points out of it. But, um, I mean, I'd love to see the same formula applied to other things like, like public transport. Well, is it actually better to well, have... They, they actually said that the only thing that came close to the bicycle, if you were talking over the 15-year period, was a bus during peak traffic, peak commuter time. And, yes. and, but are they, are they taking it because, because the mixer has raised an interesting point in IRC? Or, uh, th does that include the actual cost of producing all the steel and, yes. and engine stuff yes. of the bus and the... Yes. What are they doing that causes so much carbon when they build a bike? Well, you, once again, you're melting steel and all the rest. Well, what they say is for much transporting steel. the amount of people. So if you take a fully laden bus, okay, right, while it's driving. So this is during peak commute time. And they're probably not looking in South Africa. They're looking in London where that bus is packed, 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 packed. It's actually equal to using a bike. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. Over, over its laughter. The rest of the time, like out of peak traffic, no. Then the then the, the bicycle. Yeah. This is this is why I like scientists and engineers because they do calculations like, do you actually get bang for buck in terms of energy generation out of a solar panel, um, you know, versus just shoving coal in a plant and getting power that way? They ask really unpopular questions and do the math and yes. get some really thoughts. unpopular yeah. answers. Quite often the coal wins. <laughs> <laughs> because more often than not. Yes. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Um, um, the same site, will, which will be in the, in the show notes, actually gives you a nice graph breakdown of walking bicycle, help, escalator, sedan, SUV, and so on and so on. So it actually gives you a breakdown all the way down. And a pickup, which we call a, a bucky, bucky in this country. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, yes. Right, okay, well, we're just going to go into quite quickly the two South African topics again. Hmm. Uh, my broadband, uh, is uh, unveiled in our two gig. Or three gig sim. Yeah, um, um, that is that is sexy as hell. I, I'm really impressed with ATA with what ATA is doing at the moment. It's basically 1,500. It's roughly the same. What? What? No, 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 no. Oh, it is it is prepaid. Yeah. You pay 150 bucks. You get two gigs of data prepaid for the month. Oh. It rolls over to the following to the following 60 month. Days. 60 yeah. days. Up to 60 over. days. Yeah. So if you buy it at the for instance, if you buy it on the 31st. Then it's then it's only going to last until the thirtieth of September. If you buy it now, it's going to last until the thirtieth of September. It always lasts until the end of the next month. Cool. So it's up to sixty days rollover. Uh, two gigs anytime. Sorry. No, we're in August. So it's yeah, technically end of thirty first of October. No, September. 
60 days rollover. Yeah, but it's not 60 days rollover. It's up to 60 days rollover. It's so if you buy it at the 1st of August, yes, and it, then it, it'll only expire on the 30th of okay. September. So it's always at the end of the following month. Okay. Uh, I think it's for billing system issues because the billing systems aren't, can't handle too many variables. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so anyway, um, because most operators do okay, this. Okay, so that's a, a not a, it's a prepaid. It's prepaid. Pure prepaid. So that's I'm not talking... I didn't realize. I'm thinking with Salsi, you mm. pay the full amount. Yeah. This is not. This is not. And th this, that's exactly what they're trying to answer because I think these guys really, they heard the people complaining about the fact that I'm not signing a two-year contract and they heard the people complaining about the fact that I have to front three grand or whatever to get my Salsi thing and they said... Fine. Um, we're going to get people on our network. Come hello, high water. That's a good move. That's very cool. That's Prepaid, sorry, I must, I no realize. commitment. If you don't like it, bugger off. Okay, kind of hard questions. Um, your normal prepaid SIM cards expire in 90 days. So if you haven't loaded any data, the card's off. Have they said that? Um, it's, it, all your, I think it's a thing. They have to recycle those numbers. It's a Rika thing. Um, but they can't recycle the number. They've got to, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, 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 no, 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 no. They don't do that. Like if you, if you load, if, you, if you've loaded any airtime, whether that's data, as long as you're using the thing, then it'll stay active. Yeah. As long as you're using One it. One thing that it says, if you have a current ATIS SIM card, you can't bundle, you can't add this to it. Yeah, but like you just said, I mean, they want the subscriber base, so yes. they're not going to let you add bundle into it. Well, no, no it's not just that. The, the, the issue is actually, uh, it's a technical issue, and I don't think a billing system issue again. So... Um, uh, this thing only runs on their own network. Uh, for those who don't yeah. know, ATA has a roaming agreement with MTN across the country to, to bolster their coverage while they're rolling out the rest of their network. Um, and um, th those roaming charges are actually really high. Um, ask SLC with them for their roaming charges on Vodacom. Um, and so they cannot offer low-cost services like this unless it's at a massive loss okay. on, the, on the roaming network. Mm -hmm. So this operates only on their own towers, um, and in order to do that, they have to provision the SIM very specifically on their back end. And so once you've done that, it will never, ever roam on MTN again unless you switch it. Well, maybe, you, maybe you'll be able to switch it back. But once you've switched, basically it sounds like you've switched. Okay. Um, so you've, you've got... You've got to check the coverage. Yeah. So check the coverage. What's nice you, about this is I can buy one and check it for me. Well, at 149, yeah. You're if not, it fails, it's only 149 rand. Exactly. You can it's, ride it's around. Worth and okay, that's very not good. Not going that's to go on the map and look. You know, am I this? What mountains are around me? I can. I can. Go, worst case, I've lost. I haven't now signed myself in for a two-year contract. Two-year contract, Correct. exactly. So, and there are places where I found ATA coverage where it's not on the map. That map is very conservative. So, which is which is good. They want to try and make sure that people, even under they said even under fifty percent load of the network, which they're not they're, they're not really at yet, mm. or fifty percent of a cell. Yeah. Um, that people will still be able to get good coverage and good throughput. Um, so yeah, I'm. I'm. I mean, like, uh, I don't. I don't like gushing about people because you never know when something can go wrong. But I think ATA is really trying hard. I think it would be really cool to have a very, a very strong fourth competitor. It's just a yes. pity that it's Telcom. Yeah, uh, exactly. No, people, but it's a pity. Stop, stop thinking that it's Telcom and then think yeah. that it's ATA. And yeah, Apple and that's what they would love because people do see Telcom and and people have long memories. Um, and f and and is ATA coming on my telecom bill? Uh, it can, if you want. So, yeah, it's it's an unfortunate situation for them because um, I really think uh, like it'd be really cool to have a, f a strong fourth competitor, but they've got an uphill battle yeah. because the cellular penetration in South Africa is already it's already like close to a hundred percent. You know, when when the other guys entered in, the market was there for the taking. Um, okay, so just they've got to pretty much poach other people's customers to survive. Just to come off the, uh, just to finalize the point quickly, um, they were talking about one rand per meg for out of bundle. Yes. That's a bit high. Um, that's standard. That's prepaid. That is not standard. Standard is two rand a meg. Okay, uh, no, no, out of bundle. Yes. Not out of bundle. Yes, not ad hoc. So you add standard ad hoc pricing is two rand. Agreed. Okay, but their prepaid out of bundle unfortunately is flat rated one rand. They don't they don't give you something for a bulk. What on. I mean is they're not being unreasonable if, okay. compared to competitors with that. Hold on. Yes. If if you saying that ATA standard rate for data without a bundle is one rand, yes, they are shaking the tree because everybody else is two rand. Exactly. <coughs> I disagree because of our next topic, which you haven't read yet. <laughs> Vodacom. Yes. What did they do today? One rand out of bundle. No, not ad hoc out of bundle. Okay, we're saying, so you, you buy airtime, 100 rand, you don't load any bundles. What are you going to pay per meg? 
So I'm you've just got confirming. I'm just fully on article. That's just that's my this. question. Th- there are there are slight technical differences here. You've got out of out of bundle. Bundle when you've loaded a bundle and it's expired. Uh, no, not expired. You've oh, already used, used up the data. data. And you then you've got ad hoc out of bundle rate per yes. megabyte is one rand from Vodacom. Yes, but that is on an iPhone contract, isn't it? Are you looking at the uh, double the data yes. at the same price? Yeah. That is for iPhone contracts. Vodacom also reduced the outer bundle price on all their packages from 150 per memory to 1 rand. Yeah, that, that is out of bundle, not ad hoc. So that means you've already loaded a bundle and, um, and you've used up the data okay, and so you've gone. And it's interesting. Um, I'm going to be doing an article on this shortly. We'll be discussing this at the next show. Okay. Is why is ad hoc so much more expensive? Well, that's my problem. We're trying to reach... Um, we're trying to reach the children in the schools, and we, we try to do with our winter school program, and actually we with Anfarm we worked and we try to do some mobile content where kids could watch it. And unfortunately, I had to sit in that, that top management meeting and say, the baseline here is two rand a meg, because if you've only if you've got a contract with only airtime, that's what you're paying. So they take your 120 rand included, and they take it off two rand a meg, which is ridiculous. And if Ata has started now with one rand per meg for that. That is, yeah, that is well, really well. shaking the tree. Yeah. And the rest. For, for Vodacom, really, um, what you can do is they've got a really, really small bundle. I'd have to just double check whether this is contract or whether you can just do this as a yeah, bolt-on. Just... Bolt-on 10 megs for 9 rand. All of a sudden, you've got a 1 rand out of bundle. But rates. it's the whole technology around somebody's now got a phone. And he d- now he needs to understand how to load data. And you've got to then well, – no, sorry, you've got to load airtime. Then you've got to convert your airtime to a data bundle and manage all of that stuff because that – that ad hoc or out of bundle then ends at the end of the month. Then you've got to take some more of your prepaid money and load it as. It's ridiculous. It's just, it, this is not how it should work. Yeah, I agree. And only now recently that I realized that MTN can give you um, your, how much you've got left in your data bundle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You didn't realize that now? Um, yes, because they only introduced it a month ago. D- haven't they had it? On, when online you, or? On a contract. No, there wasn't. Oh, okay, uh, right. Okay. I've been on page. There Go wasn't. For years there's now. not been a USSD code I, I, for contract I, 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 payers I, I, I to was, see. No, there's six pages you gave two ages, and then I went on contract, oh, and it once again just reaffirmed all the reasons why I'm not on contract, and I'm back on prepaid because I, I I'm unfortunate. I'm a, I, I'm a contract payer, so that's so. Come the end of the year, me and me and Mr. Sars have a good conversation about my yearly expenses. So that that okay. that's one of those things. But all right, okay, we're gonna move on from there into our kickers. And our what? Our kickers. Is this not a new division in the show? We've always we've have been doing it for like three or four weeks now. Have I always been? Shh. Okay. Shh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> kickers. Yeah. What's a kicker? Oh, okay. Uh, what we actually have in front of us is not the kickers. One of the articles that I was actually going to remove, which was the fact there's a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy app coming um, for iPhone and Android at some point. But basically, it's going to cover all some of the topics that were in the books. So why do you need to carry a towel? How to hail Vogon ships? How to, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I wasn't going to edit it, <laughs> but it is coming. And I was going to wait for it. It was actually released before I spoke about it. <laughs> but it looks like a cool app. Love it already. And I as long as it. It, when it, you start up, it says, don't panic. Well, if you can change your, your phone standard boot screen to be this app and actually have Don't Panic. Sure but yes, keep, keep, going, keep going. Anyway, into our kickers. Um, the first one we're going to is basically some engineers from one of the aerospace uh, went, went did a rap to go. And it's presenting engineers rap um, by hard drive. Uh, and it's actually quite B grade. Uh, I'm going to let you guys uh, but this watch is, it. This is back in the day. It's very back in the day. And these guys, anybody here watched IT? IT, uh, IT, crowd. I, I, IT, IT crowd. Yes. These guys would fit in there. How old is this video? Just go down a bit. No, it's posted in 2007. But it's, it's much older than yeah, that. Yeah, it's very old. This okay. is from the early days of uh, when we would embed these in email. Okay, click the play button. No. We, we, we shouldn't play too much of this. Anyway, we're not going to... Uh, this was just... Oh, I see. We're now going to go issues. into the kicker that Jan <laughs> actually picked. <laughs> what is the kicker, Jan? This is the best Reddit thread ever. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, should I paste the link into yeah, the... You, you talk about it? Well, I'll paste. Okay, cool. So basically, go, go to this link. It'll be in the show notes and it'll be in IRC. And um, the, the Reddit thread was... 
uh, black people, why do you name your kids ridiculous names? And then the, the question <laughs> continues, white people, why do you call your kids ridiculous names? Asian people, why do you call your kids ridiculous names? So it's not actually racially motivated. Um, it, it was just a funny question. And so the funniness just spiraled out of control. And so one, person, one person mentions um, a, a, a server at a, a fast food place who was called Carrion. Like, like, carry uh, in. No, carry in. Like, carry on my way with son. L- l- like, carry in, like what a vulture would eat. Carry in. <laughs> <laughs> and so this spawned th- one of the greatest renditions of carry on my way with Listen. son from Kansas, for those of you who don't watch Supernatural. At yes. the end of that thread, somebody composed, a s- compo- well, wrote it into a song, strummed the chords, sung it. Um, it, is, it is the greatest Reddit thread of all time. Bookmark it. And go and listen to the song. If this guy launches it on iTunes, buy it. Um, it it's awesome. Uh, and also, if you haven't watched Supernatural, go watch Supernatural. It's very good. Yes, go watch Supernatural. I, I did have a tip that I meant to say. I've got a friend who's being um, continually harping on about do you pay all your podcasts at double the speed? Because it just, you know, you get through so many more. And finally, I sat down and worked out how to do it on Android. Look, you've got to get one of the uh, Android podcast apps and then download a second thing that you've got to pay for. It's worth it. It really, you suddenly get, I managed to listen to an entire podcast. If I that. find out that more of our listeners are listening to us at double speed, I'm just going to stalk or slower. <laughs> 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 you, you, you'd be surprised. You can actually hear when people talk slower. Because all of a sudden it's at a normal speed. Uh, but they also, they do some clever stuff where, where they do frequency mm. and pitch shifting. They keep the so pitch that pe- down, people yeah. actually sound, it's not as high squeaky voices. Which would be quite irritating. Well, uh, and that's actually interesting. If you look at YouTube How did you vloggers, get to that point after this? I just suddenly remember that I meant to talk about <laughs> it. <since. laughs> uh, if you look at YouTube vloggers, they speak really fast. And that's a great way to keep the attention of your audience. Maybe that's something we should play with. Just before you close... <laughs> just, 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 just before you close the uh, show. Yes. Um, www.hdcabling.co.za cool. HD cabling. I have not purchased anything from these guys. So I'm not fully endorsing them. It's just they've got a very good online shop. They've got a lot of products. And like I said earlier, there you go. 1.8 meter micro HDMI to standard HDMI cable, 89 Rand. If you don't want to be ripped off, well, I've, I'll give these guys a whirl. Absolutely. Um, and they are here in Centurion. They've got his walk-in store, but otherwise they do I online. I just want to add the comment from the RSC, which is pretty much, you know, we, we're also wasting all this time with breathing. to breathe. Uh, so I'm assuming breathe once in the beginning and then just start rattling off the rest of the show. Which is exactly what a and bunch of YouTube pass out. <laughs> <laughs> so where to roll. Excuse me, I'll go through the show. <laughs> okay. All right. And with that, uh, we're going to say goodbye. I just want to thank you, Hanel, for joining us. Thank you. I've had a lot of fun again. Uh, Jan Vermeulen. Ah, it was great. And our mixer, who shall not be named. And then just for those that, uh, because you did forget, uh, just for those that do follow us on a Thursday night, unfortunately, due to um, professional commitments, myself and Cecilia (laughs) will not be available tomorrow night. We are really sorry for this. Um, We will try and make a a great show for the following week. So tomorrow night, there will be no uh, LT Afrikaans broadcast. Sorry about that. That's very sad. What are we doing tomorrow night then? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Take Never over the world. <laughs> cool. What? <laughs> it's Pinky and, and the, the brain. 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 Okay, we shouldn't <laughs> sing it because just now we get flagged. All right, we're going to say goodnight. Thank good you night, guys. Cheers. 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 Bye. <laughs>